Hello and welcome to the GA show here on the 42.ie. We are high stooling it for one last time this season. Dublin are All Ireland champions for the third year in a row, and it is another case of what might have been for Mayo. Gavin Casey here, joined by Kevin O'Brien of the 42.ie. How are you, Kevin? Hey, Gav. Not too bad. Good stuff. We are also delighted to be joined by the man, the myth, the legend, Johnny Doyle of Kildare. Uh, all the dubs had heads in them, I'm afraid. So uh, we are delighted to be joined by Johnny. How are things, Johnny? I'm good now, yeah. Not a bother, thank God. Did you enjoy the weekend? Yeah, I did enjoy it. Uh, you know, lots of emotion, even from a, a neutral point of view. Regardless of, of uh, you know, trying to admire Dublin, your heart will still have to go out to, to Mayo and you know, pushing so close and, and still... As they say, as Martin Story famously said, always oh, the bridesmaid, never the bride, and uh, it's tough on them. It really is, but you know, enjoy enjoyed the game absolutely. Yeah, well, I suppose it's been peddled plenty over the last couple of days <coughs> in, in uh, column inches and elsewhere, and even by uh, Killian O'Connor in Mayo's own homecoming that they're not looking for sympathy. And I think certainly looking back in the game, even relative to the two finals last year, where you could have argued in the first final last year, oh, there's two own goals. It, you know, you have to put down some of it down to luck. This time I don't think it's a hard luck story at all really, like I think they just they emptied the tank and just came up short, but I don't think they can have too many complaints or look at too many incidents where they're like, we were hard done by there, you know, much, much of the kind of difficulty they came into was probably self-inflicted if you look at like Tony Vaughan's, Tony Vaughan's red card and a couple of moments like that, Killian O'Connor hitting the post, so I don't think they can have really too many complaints this year, can they? Uh, probably not. You know, when you look at it in the call later day, you know, you're 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 correct, and you know, you look back at all those chances and really decent chances, and particularly in the first half, um, you know, where where they had good scoring opportunities and just probably weren't as clinical as as uh, as Dublin were when they when they got their chance. And you know, at the highest level, you have to be taking those chances. And you know, even as good a year as Andy Moore had, he'd, he'd probably a chance in the second half. And you know, it, you might just pick out one one chance, but it's still. You know, it's such a tight game. Such the stakes are so high. Every little thing makes a difference. And you know, I'm, I'm sure Killian O'Connor. You know, he I heard his speech, and he doesn't want sympathy. And, and if I was in his position, I wouldn't want sympathy. But it's still hard not to keep. I know, yeah. It's, fine it's sympathy, an actual, you know? natural inclination for uh, us to feel bad. Absolutely, you know. And for, for him, look at it. It's free taking is a lonely spot. You know, it's great when they're sailing over the bar, but for that one that, that doesn't go where you where you intended to put it. Um, it's a tough spot, and I'm, I've no doubt as I, I, I've been in that position myself, and I'm sure he's, he's beaten himself up over that. And um, you know, he did the two chances he had, he you'd put your house on him to kick mm -hmm. them, you know. And um, he was in the same position maybe last year and, and had an opportunity, albeit it was a tough enough one. But again, you'd you'd, you'd think he's he, he's capable of landing this and uh, and has done all year. So it is a it. it there's a lot of chances where, where they had and, and um, you know destiny was in their own hands and, and again as you rightly point out they just didn't take it um, and that's that's tough and you know they will they will feel sorry for themselves within and you know the likes of Donny Vaughan and Lee Keegan and these guys that maybe had the opportunities to just to to, um, to get those vital scores and, and you know but it's 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 a tough place to be and mm. the next few weeks are going to be tough on them but you know from your I never played in an All Ireland final, so I'm sure people out there said you don't know what you're talking about. But you know, imagine what they're saying about us. <laughs> <laughs> but there's big, there's big. You know, you sit there on a, on a, a Monday after beat, beating in a big championship match, and you know the first first place you're looking at is at yourself and what what more you could have done. But after a while, you know that goes that, and you just get back at it and mm. no choice. And that's that's the thing. It may all be no different. And, They'll rally the troops. They'll, they'll look at. I'm sure Stephen Rochford will look at what the, the management did. Is there anywhere they could have, you know, what are they going to learn from the not just Sunday but the whole year? And and uh, is there any area that they feel they're weak in? And can they add to that? And that's the small little margins they'll be looking for. And you know, it's it's funny. Football is is a strange thing, and or sport even. You know, you just you pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and go again. And I think that's what why the rest of the country and in, and including Dublin, I say, have such admiration for for uh, Mayo. Their, you know their willingness to come back time and time again, and um, you know they're a, they're a certainly a driven group that they will they will rally and, and, and rise again, and th that's what you'd hope for them. Yeah, and I, I suppose going back there, uh, Kev, to like the idea of even a couple of missed chances, like um, O'Connor's free. You're never going to have an All Ireland final where absolutely everything is perfect either. You know what I mean? Some you have to take some of these chances and, and look at them and say you're going to miss one or two. And you know Dublin can say the same. There, there were a couple of uh, misses that they had where maybe they could have made the game a little bit more comfortable, or even spells in the game where they were completely second best that they might have uh, turned the tide a little bit. But for all of Mayo's shortcomings, and there weren't too many, in fairness, 
they also did an awful lot right on the day. Like you had a great stat there about um, that you tweeted out, Kevin Bryan Seven on Twitter uh, about Kieran Kilkenny and the impact he made in the final relative to the semi final, and it was minuscule, you know. Yeah. So like, and that was literally down to Rotford putting Keegan on him and kind of nullifying a point, point guard. And you would have th- you would have thought that Kilkenny is is so intrinsic to Dublin's game plan, and then. He has what eight, ten possessions, and they still mm. find a way. You know what I mean? You're talking about a team that are just so adaptable and uh, so prepared to to win by any means necessary. I suppose. Yeah, like I think Rochford probably got most of the most of the matchups right in the game. It's probably, you know, the thing that probably let Mayo down was you know they're two points up, sixty-three minutes. Um, they didn't really have the game management to kind of see at home down the stretch. Where you look at Dublin um, when Rock hit the free. Um, immediately then from the kick out like all the six forwards grabbed grabbed their men and it was filled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you had to do it. Exactly, you know? yeah. Mayo should have been doing that from sixty five minutes on. Yeah, like Mayo probably should have ran the clock down, yeah. But uh, you, you saw Dublin then like Costo got a yellow, Kilkenny got black carded, walked off, took his time going off. Um telling that's a drop, drop yeah, as yeah. he's strolling off. Yeah. And then they play keep ball then the last couple of minutes. You just maybe it's the fact that, you know, they've already won four All Irelands and they're used to that and you know, we've seen it in the league as well that they were able to close tight games out. Um, but I think when Mayo look back, like that was probably the difference at the end. Yeah, and I, th- I think there's a, there's you know there's a point being made there where you know you have to look at where both teams are. You know, th- these guys have gone for three All Irelands in a row. They've won. They've been there. They know mentally. You know where Mayo, whether we like it or not, they're a mentally tough tough group of lads. No doubt about it. But there's pressure there. You know, there's a whole. Not the whole expectation of a county, you know. They, we, how often have we heard about the course? That had, these guys are only human, and yeah. you know, you feel if Mayo could land one, they're capable of landing, you know, two or three. Where, you know, it's it's such a different a difference, and that's why we'll see, you know, Kerry coming every now and again, winning all. They know what it is. It's hard to see what that X factor is, um, but it, whether it's tradition or. You know that that winning mentality or whatever it is, and you'll see it. There's, it's the same, I'm sure. You know, in clubs, I, I'd see clubs in you know that are used to winning in Kildare. They'll nine if there's a real battle. You know, more feel to win by a point rather than lose mm. by a point. They just know how to win, and um, I'm sure it's the same. Maybe in, in other counties, maybe Road and Offaly. Just you know, when their backs to the wall, they just know how to win. And I th- I think they're just coming from two different different places where there's Mayo, as I said, they're just trying so hard, and and you know, it's just even though over trying. You look at you look at Connor Loftus that lads, you know, just keep possession, don't get. And next thing he gets turned over, heads to trouble. Take a ball out and it's back up the field. Where if you if you thought that was the other end, you know they would have recycled, recycled, mm. recycled until something came of it. And that's I suppose it's experience or or maybe maybe that's game management, whatever you want what you want to put on it. But certainly Dublin, that's probably just a little bit of a difference between both sides. Yeah, like I thought there were two moments really, or well maybe not moments, but two aspects, particularly of the second half, that were kind of symbolic of how Dublin got over the line again. The first being Dermot Connolly comes on and. I thought he was actually instrumental. I thought he, he made a huge impact on the game, but it wasn't maybe the usual sort of swashbuckling Connolly that we see breaking tackles and kicking phenomenal scores. He did kick one, of course, but the composure of him, you know, like yeah. slowing things down almost, telling Lance to calm down, winning freeze, and just keeping it taking over. And then also the winning score, and you see Lee Keegan allegedly, or more or less fully, throwing a, a <laughs> GPS at, uh, at Dean Rock as he kicks the score, and the fact that it didn't have any impact on rock whatsoever you know it was like you know kitchen sink stuff more or less and rock still sinks it and it just kind of you know you're kind of thinking well if not even that was going to stop them you know that they're they're pretty much indomitable where, where as far as mayor were concerned um we did also speak with uh philly mcmahon <laughs> about that incident i'll get your take on it in a second lads uh, here's what philly made of uh, the gps and and i think it was lee keegan maybe clocking up an extra couple of yards on uh, on the stats I'm sure you were relieved when that final whistle went to be one point in front. Yeah, definitely. Um, they threw everything at us, um, even uh, certain devices. So uh, we don't throw our GPS away. They're too expensive. <laughs> So 
So that was Philly's take on the incident. Uh, I know Dean Rock was saying, I think, to off the ball uh, on during the home, to join the same homecoming, actually, that he didn't see the GPS and it didn't uh, impact him in any way. Although his reaction after he lands the score, where he absolutely cleared out a male man, would suggest he probably saw something happening all right. It's only we can really. I mean, there, there probably doesn't need to be much made of it, to be honest, because as. Uh, as Dean Rock alluded to, and, and as plenty of Dublin players have alluded to, it didn't change the game in any way. But I suppose when you see that, and you still see Rock landing the score, it's it's just Dublin's day, really, isn't it? Yeah, it probably is. And and look at you know, Lee Egan will get especially under the, the the world of social media. I'm sure he's have to get in a lot of a lot of stick over it. This um, is the thing that Lee actually did, apparently. You know, yeah, as opposed to apparently, the yes, ex- <laughs> absolutely. Just to keep keep any uh, legal side away from us. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and look at you know. If you were in the same position again, you'd you'd probably do the same thing. You know, you're looking for every every inch. I'd say fair play to him for even thinking about it. To be honest with you, <laughs> um, you know, to actually to in in such in such circumstances to to reach behind and take it out of out of your back of your jersey and and I'd say fair play to him. What happens um, though if? If he does put Rock off there and Mayo go on to win the game, like Mayo probably go from heroes to kind of I a little bit derided. N- no, I wouldn't buy into that at all. No? I think you know. With such high stakes, I mean, you know, we all do things on the field. You know, you ask Sean Kavanagh if he was in that position again with 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 Conor McManus bearing down on goal. You know, to me that was the start of the black card, really. Mm. Um, and he'd do the very same. And I, I said to him, if he didn't, he'd be foolish. You know, it's it's at that level, it's 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 win at all cost. Um, you know. You would, as I say, if if he did miss and may on may on down to win it, it would be huge controversial. But look at every every little inch. You know these boys are are there to win, not to entertain. And you know we want we the general public want to be entertained, and we love games like Sun. But it's it's win first and entertain last. And you know that's that's the level they're at now. You know, um, I, I, I say it's it's not very sportsmanlike. Um, you know, but look at. You know, you have to. It's it's winner takes all, and and it's it's tough. But in fairness to, to Dean Rock, he, you know, he's ice in the veins, and like he he missed he missed, albeit he didn't miss too many handy ones. But he he kicked a couple that, you know, you'd first two, really, yeah, yeah. And he normally the first one was really the difficult one. Uh, the second, second was, was forty five, yeah, yeah, which he normally does. He normally does land them. Um, and even like going back, of course, to the league final as well. You know, like you're kind of talking six months on or whatever. Like he he kind of misses a crucial one, and then. When they need him most, he yeah, and I think, it. but I think that the thing is, that, and you talk to any any um, any place kicker, you know, um, you listen to a gar or any of these boys, they they just have this, you know, unshakable belief in themselves, and the pro, the, the I suppose the mental side of it is, it's you know, it's it's one hour one they're looking for, you know, they're not looking for, it's just every time, and I remember I remember years ago the saying to Jimmy White, you know, you missed an easy black to to win some. And he says, you know, 99 times over 100, you'd, you'd pot them. And he says, yeah, but it's only one out of one I have to pot. Mm. And that's that's the big thing. And, mm. you know, they have this unshakable, you know, it's 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 the process. And I've often heard last time, you know, the grass is the same, the ball is the same, the the goals are the same. And it's just really, if you're focused enough, what's happened outside of that, because some lad is roaring in hills, shouldn't really come into it. Mm. Um, and I'd say Dean Rock has, has perfected his free taking to that. All those things don't come into it, and you know, fair play to him because it was it was a it was a pressure kick, and he delivered. Yeah, yeah. monumental. I think like he showed just the metal strength he has, and like there's so many leaders now in that Dublin team. You saw James McCarthy driving on late on. You mentioned Connolly and, and McManum coming off the bench, and obviously they had a massive impact as well. You know, so like even losing Jack McCaffrey, and they still just had the kind of mental resolve to you know to keep going and. You know, it didn't. It didn't stop them. Like yeah, and you'd have to admire. The, you know, when you look back and like, uh, obviously Dean Rock was was someone you, you earmarked from an early age because of of the, the, he was Barney's son, and um, he he struggled to get into that Dublin side for a while. You know, in his early career, he was he was getting, and then he he didn't. He was kicking really top scores in in league games, but just wasn't getting his yeah. place in the champions. So he he's come a hard road, and I'm sure you know you hear Johnny Cooper saying the same. It wasn't just you know. Catapulted from an under twenty one side, they had to work really, really hard to get on. And like anything else in life, if you have to work really hard, you're not going to let it go on every inch that, that uh, you know you need, every small little detail. And to me, you know, 
that's I admire I admire um, Dean Rock for his his ability to, to kick frees in those pressure situations. But he's worked really really hard and he just you know he wasn't born a natural free taker. Obviously, look grown up looking at his dad mm. and he was a big influence to kicking frees. But uh, you know that's that's not enough at the highest level. He's put in hours and hours mm. and, and uh, he got his rewards. Big time. We've got a, a couple of questions here. Uh, Dennis O'Donovan says it's surely against the rules, not just bad sportsmanship. If I threw something from the stands to put him off, I'd be thrown out. What's the difference? Yeah, it's a fair point, and and maybe maybe the the uh, the headquarters will have a look at that, and maybe there's a ban coming for 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 Lee Keegan. Um, you know, it is. You know, it's it's not right. He shouldn't have done it. You know, you can roll out all these these right things to say, but. You know, if you're in you're his just position, if you were in his position, oh, you would have done it yeah. right or wrong. I probably wouldn't have thought of it. That's the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be Did you have GPSs in New Jersey? No, no. Uh, well, we were poor in, in Kalea. We had one to go around. You shared it. You got ten minutes when you handed it to the next lad. You could have taken <laughs> off a boot, maybe Johnny or something. Yeah. <laughs> I think like, just talking about Lee Keegan, like he always plays on the edge and he has that will to win, like, and that's just part of it. You know that we, we see, like, we were talking about Martin Kilkenny there, and he does absolutely everything. You know, off the ball, checking his runs and that, and I think that's just that's just Lee, you know, he'd do anything to win. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> a lot of people chiming in about the GPS, uh, Mark Pender. So you say it, it'd be acceptable at underage level to throw something at another player. I mean, I don't think Johnny is saying it's acceptable necessarily just that it's he under- understands yeah, why he did it. it is understandable, yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, you know, you're n- you know, uh, there's lots of things happening on Sunday. You wouldn't be going out saying, no, do that at an under eight match. Mm. You know, like, let's be honest about it, no different than any other sport. Um, but, uh, you know, as you say, it's just that stakes are so high. You would, I, I, it's not acceptable. But I can understand, yeah. you know, why why you would why he did it, and uh, you know that's that's part of it. Look at, I think he he if he does get a ban, it's hard to it's hard to argue with it. And yeah. um, he shouldn't have done what he did. Absolutely no way. But he'll take the ban as well, though, because yeah, it was it, from his perspective, it was worth it. Yeah, you know? absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Darren Duggan saying this is laughable. If it was a Dublin player, we would never hear the end of it. You're almost applauding him for throwing something at another player. Well, I think you've absolutely clarified what you were what you were saying there. Uh, Brian McNeil is a question. Did the Dublin subs have a big impact compared to Mayo's? Well, I suppose we touched on Dublin subs. They did relative to Mayo's for sure. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. And like it, you know, the starting Onogara probably didn't pay off. But then when you have guys like Connolly McManaman who can come on and Bernard Brogan, he had a couple of chances, but you know, which he didn't score. But you know, he kind of he had a control and influence down the stretch. And I think if you look at the the age profile of the guys Dublin were bringing on, even being able to bring on Paul Flynn early on, mm. um, compared to the you know the likes of Conor Loftus who were probably still a bit inexperienced at that level, you know. Um, yeah, I definitely think that was the difference. Yeah, and and also you, you have to realise as well, even though you mightn't, you know, these guys that are their household names, you you take Kevin McMinnum came on, got a score, but and and these are the things you can't gauge is, you know, it, it the fact that himself and Dermot Connolly came on, Paul Mannion sort of came into it. So you know these boys take watching. You can't take your eyes off them for a minute because. Mm. You know, bang, and it's a score. So all of a sudden, then you maybe you're if if Kevin McMinimum makes a, a dart out, you're and you're not protecting that D as you, as you should, and all of a sudden, then someone like Karma Costello came on. We haven't seen Karma Costello all year. Why did he come on? Much like he did in the in the game last year, he was going to you know half a chance and he get a yeah. score. And um, plus the other subs, as you said, are, are going to drag defenders away, and it'll open it up for one of them. Absolutely, and and you know, they, they, like you bring in Bernard Brogan. Um, but these these guys are super footballers, and they just take that bit more mind. And you can imagine now the likes of Colin Boyle, who's after, you know, just running himself to a standstill, uh, and and all of a sudden he has to chase someone like Kevin McMinimum, or you know, or yeah. you're thinking, oh, Shane, Mike, I should be getting easier as the game goes on, not harder. Um, and and for that reason, I think th- the strength of Dublin bench probably had a, m- a bigger influence, or just than the scoreboard. I think it had a, it was a major major plus for for Jim Gavin and his team. Yeah, big time. Well, we don't have any uh, dubs on the kind of uh, panel or stool or chair or thing here today. So uh, we did catch up with a load of Dublin fans at the homecoming in Smithfield last night. Uh, They were fairly jubilant, I think it's fair to say. Uh, Here's what they made of Sunday's action. We're going for four in a row now. Yeah, brilliant performance, brilliant performance yesterday. Great, great, great commitments they've given down through the years, and back to the support, back to the support as well. Very, very, very privileged, privileged to have such a great, great team. It was probably the most nervous I've ever been because it was like real close. It was like constantly like a chasing game, so I was nervous. Yeah, 
Uh, I was crying and all. <laughs> it was just emotional because like it's like three in a row, like it's great. And the fairness came to seven seven minute, you know. Like when Dumont got that last point when, when Mayo hit the bar, you know. But like if Mayo would have got that point, it would have been a whole different story. But after Dean Rock took that point, Jesus, you know, we did it. We did it in spirit and glory, you know, the dogs did well. Stand up beside the fireplace, I take that look from off your face. Cause you ain't ever gonna burn my heart Are you ready? So sad It was crazy, absolutely crazy. When the first goal went in, just at the, at the, at the start, the, the, the place went, was just, was, was actually buzzing. What about this team then? Do you think they're the greatest team of all time? Oh yeah, I definitely think. I think, I think they'll, they'll, win, they'll win Sam next year again. Throw it all away. So I start the revolution from my bed. Cause you set the bridge I have into my head. Step outside the summertime is in blue. Me, I'm Marty and I love to party. So the Dubs are obviously hungry for more success, understandably so. Mayo's still looking to get the monkey off their back. But uh, Johnny, do you reckon next year now going into another year of it for Mayo, like that they're going to be shy a couple of the big names? Or can you see the, the nucleus of this squad sticking around and just having another bash off it? Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to know. Like You're looking at the, the age of, of these guys. Like Andy Moran is, is in his 30s. Um, Keith Higgins, obviously, we, we talked a little bit earlier on about about Alan Dillon, and you know he didn't really have much of an impact. Um, you know, didn't come on on Sunday, and I'm, I'm sure he's he's thinking, look at you know where am I going? But uh, I, I I think they will hold on. I think you know it, it's vital for Mayo's cause that they will. But you also have to look at their personal lives. I mean, um, you know, Andy Moran is a young family now, and you know there's lots of his time is when you start having kids your time has to go elsewhere as well so it's a uh, but I, I, I feel that, that they will hold on they, I, I'd be hoping that they will I'm sure um, Stephen Rochford will sit them down and go through a few bits and maybe say look at we need you for for coming for a championship you know mm. work away on your own we, we, we don't expect you to be be tugging out for the FBD or anything like that so I think it's it's how you mind them and, and keep the hunger See, the hunger is the big thing and uh, once that hunger is there and that you know it, it's um, and Mayo whether you know they've been so close and it's a small little thing and they will st- look search tooth and nail to find that extra little percentage or half percentage to get them to get them over the line and you know as I said when when the, the the, the disappointment fades as it, as it will fade away. They go back to their clubs and um, they get ready for club championship. And you get back, you get back and go again. Um, I think Mayo, you know, still will feel that they're they're so close and they'll they'll go back to the well again. Yeah. What about? I'm um, oh sorry, kept going. Yeah. No, I just think just on Moran. Like I mean, he's he's 33 now and it was, it was probably his best best season in a in a Mayo jersey. So Indian summer. Yeah. So there's no reason why he won't come back. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see what Rochford does because he kind of said we spoke to him at the team hotel yesterday and he said he was going to take he was going to make a decision in October. Um, obviously, like he's he's been to three All Ireland finals and lost two by a point and drew one. Mm. You know, so. Um, just started a new job as well. Yeah, just started a new job. Yeah, and he's two young kids at home. Um, so you know, it, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what he actually decides. Like, possibly it might be easier to come back knowing they're so close. You know, and knowing they're, they're, they're maybe how, only inches how hard, away. How hard is it to walk away knowing you're so yeah, close? Yeah, you but know? again, like it's a long road back to September. You know, the only thing is the Super Eights next year will be interesting. You know, Mayo's squad should probably benefit, and you know, it'll be interesting to see like. They probably should have a path through to the semi final. Yeah, and and the other side of it is for for Stephen Rice, but like you know, with with work and you, you see you hear Derek McGrath and maybe before him Jack O'Connor thing you know where the, it's nearly a part time job. Like it's it's mm. tough. Of it's a tough mm. tough. It. Like when you look at the hours and hours that these guys put in, um, particularly management. Like I would I would see it now. Um, Ron of Sweeney's a good friend of mine, and he would say the difference between in the management and the player like he said you put in a lot of hours as a player and but 
its management is just so much light years ahead of the hours between meeting lads and trying to deal with you know county boards or your sponsor looking for a few bob to do this or there's so much goes on and uh, it's uh, it's it's a, it's a tough number particularly when and he, he's a, he's a young man he's 38 or 39 mm-hmm. is all Stephen Rashford mm-hmm. is and a young family and you know if he's moving job he's probably moving to a more pressurized job as well and mm-hmm. um, so all these things will come into it you'd you'd hope for for Mayo's sake that he will stay on I'm sure the, the Killian O'Connors and, and these guys the leaders Lee Keegan and Colin Boyle would sit down with him and say look at we're not finished this job yet and yeah. we'll, we'll be doing everything to keep him on I would imagine um, so but look at it's no one knows until only Stephen himself what what uh, what position he's in I'd be very hopeful for, for Mayo football that he would stay on yeah just I suppose very quickly on Dublin then Kev uh, the same question can't really foresee them losing too many again maybe uh, no. Bastic as you were saying and yeah I think yeah Dennis Bastic is probably the one Um Bernard Brogan, you know, he's 33 now and he's, he's coming off the bench, you know, so um, it just depends on if, he, if he's kind of happy to have that role, you know, that, that, mm-hmm. that bench role. Um, other than that, like, there's not too many. I'd imagine Cluxon will, will keep going, go for a fifth All-Ireland as, as captain. Um, Jack McCaffrey, you know, it looked like he got a pretty bad knee injury, so we'll have to see how that goes. You know, he could miss a large part of the next season. Hopefully not. Um, but other than that, I'd imagine most of them will stick around. Yeah, maybe one or two coming back as yeah, well. Yeah, well, but that's the, the other side. I mean, uh, Rory O'Carroll is, is off travelling, and you know, he'd imagine he's he's, he's gone for two years now. Yeah, you know, two so years, yeah. there's only so much travelling. You get around the world a good bit in two years. So I would imagine, <laughs> uh, I would imagine he's sitting maybe in some bar in, in Australia or New York or somewhere like that, saying, "Okay." I'm ready to come back in here. No, it's it's it, he still has to go back and and uh, try get into the squad, mm, that's which the is thing. particularly after two years. Abso- like absolutely, to get into that yeah. Setup. And and um, and maybe look at who knows. Maybe he doesn't want. It. Maybe he's happy enough. Uh, I, I sometimes look back, you know, when you're when you're playing and you're in a bubble, and when you step outside it, you're like there's times I think some of the training, some of the stuff. You say, how did we put ourselves through that? But yeah. when you're actually doing it, you don't see it. It just mm. becomes a way of life. And um, maybe he, when he's when he's out uh, out of that system, he's thinking, oh, thanks be to God, I'm, I'm away from <laughs> yeah. all that. So who knows? But uh, certainly you'd be in a healthy situation if he was if he had the hunger and was knocking at the door as well. Plus, you know, you've you've young lads coming on. Um, the likes of you know Conor Callan and the year he's uh, he's going to be a year more experienced next year he'll have learned an awful lot you know had a mm. super year but will still have learned a lot um, you know Karma Costello these guys are, are chomping at the bit as well so uh, and that's a healthy thing because you know you need all you n- any complacency and, and complacency is not a word you use with Dublin or, or especially Jim Gavin but you know you you need these guys hungry and, and chomping at the bit and um, I suppose that's what kept Kilkenny at the top for years um, in Hurling was the, you know Brian Cody would have said that the fiercest games they played were were in-house games and, mm. and uh, I'm sure Dublin is something similar yeah well uh, I suppose on that uh, topic of potential Dublin dominance uh, Darren Duggan has apparently forgiven you Johnny for your <laughs> previous comments <laughs> thanks Darren uh, yeah he said uh, <laughs> what do you think about uh, Work's comments to split Dublin up it's a chance now to appease all the Dublin fans watching uh, yeah, look split at them it. Up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and look at you, I, I saw last week. You know the Dublin, the so-called Dublin second uh, second team, or yeah. at least their second six forwards. Frightening, and it's frightening. There's no doubt about it. And will it happen? I don't see it happening. Um, Is I there a reason for it to happen? Is there cause for it to happen? Um, look at you know. Th- there's certainly. I suppose it. You know, if you talk about it enough, you'll find loads of reasons to say that it, it should happen. Or, um, you know, with the population, I still can't see it happening. I think there's too much. Just you know, it's easy, it's easy to, to say get rid of the provincial championships. But there's so much entwined in it. There's so many different uh, structures within the organisation that ha- would have to change. Um, so I don't see it happening. And you know, you you, you listen to the both sides of the argument, and you say, well, look at. You know, there was no one in, in the 70s and 80s looking at Kerry to be split in two. There was nobody looking for Tyrone in the noughties or Kerry in the noughties to be to be split in two or Kilkenny in the hurling. So why should it be Dublin? Um, and, you know, there's pros and cons for it. There's an awful lot of, of really, really top-class footballers that will never get the opportunity in Dublin um, to, to play because it's, you know, there's such a population there. Um, I can't see Dublin being split in, in two for the uh, foreseeable future. And look at, let's be honest about it, if you were a Dublin player or supporter or involved in Dublin football you probably wouldn't want it either you, you're enjoying this and you know while you know we've heard about the funding and all the facts and figures surrounding that and you know but if it was me I'd be enjoying it because you know who knows um, 
how long it'll last you know you just it could don't be know. cyclical as well that's the thing yeah absolutely mm. and you know we could be looking at five in a row we could be looking at six in a row and, um, but at the moment I don't think Dublin will be fitting too Okay, what do you make of it? Yeah, I, I probably agree with Johnny there. Like, I think you know, you, you look at the Dublin hurlers. Like, why aren't they dominating? Then, we're, we're, if they have you know such a big population as well, um, I don't think it's I don't think it's realistic, and I, I don't think it would happen. Um, you know, as you said, like we never kind of said to split Kerry or, or Tyrone in the past. Like, so um, yeah, like I, I, I don't see it happening. Though, to be honest. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll uh, see how that plays out uh, over the next couple of years. Uh, before we wrap, boys, for the year. Uh, let's talk very quickly about Player of the Year and uh, All Stars. Uh, my start with Player of the Year. Um, I kind of got the impression, even watching James McCarthy's very quiet first half, I was like, this guy's going to win Man of the Match purely on the basis that you kind of heard in the week leading up to the game, like, yeah, James McCarthy might be a bit of a wild card shout there for Player of the Year, and usually the Man of the Match will feed into that narrative. Um, I would argue, like, Andy Moran is, is, should be a shoe in, given the season he's had, even as good as McCarthy was. What do you reckon, Johnny? Yeah, I, I'd be a little bit on that as well. Like, you know, no doubt James McCarthy had a massive year. And, and you know, uh, the way Dublin play, and it's, it's, they've, they've brought the team to a new level. Like, there's, there's so many stars, but yet there's no star brighter than the rest. Mm. You know, like, Kilkenny had a, a great year, um, and, you know, it was tied up. But all of a sudden, in the void left by him, someone else steps in. Conor Callan, you know, an unbelievable goal. Probably was a little bit quiet after yeah. after in the game, um, and I, I think that's what Jim Gavin has created. Where regardless of anything else, you know, any player can can have a can have a brilliant day at any stage, and and you know if they don't, the show goes on, and that's yeah. that's a really powerful position to be in. Um, whereas if you look at all the games, and you're talking about Player of the Year. You have to look at the full year, and that's probably where you know, like you could, you could have a brilliant semi-final, a brilliant final, and that could be enough to play, get your player of the year. Um, no different than the All Stars. You know, I looked at the All Star selection the other night, and I did, I didn't know whether they were picking the team of the day or the team of the year. You know, and, yeah. and that's the way it's gone. I think that it should be looked at and say, okay, let's look at the overall package, um, because you know, there's lots of brilliant players out there that. If they were in that on that stage, individual players, mm. they probably would shine as bright as any, you know, any fit into a system, and um, but they don't get the chance. So I think they should be, you know, have a look at the whole year as a bit more. It's sort of gone away from that. There was a time where, you know, if someone came out, I would have. I mean, Martin Lynch won an All Star in '91. Clare beaten in the first round by by Lau, but they got to a league final. Mm. Do you know, and you were nearly rewarded for that. If you if someone won a, a provincial championship, you know, out of the blue, you nearly were rewarded for that where now it's it's really the, the last two finals, two and, finals yeah. and maybe a couple from the semis. semi-final yeah. you know and that's the way it's gone so I suppose I'm gone, gone away from your original question oh, no. I mean um, you've pretty much sent a message there to Fintan O'Toole who yeah. isn't joining us to be <laughs> at that all-star meeting I hope you're listening Fintan taking on board yeah but and, and look at uh, to me to me that the, the one player that was probably all through the year was really really when you know was really stood up above anyone else to me it was Andy Moore um, and I'm sure there's Dublin people saying, "Oh, you know, it's Dublin again." But I think Darren Duggan, Darren, he's sorry, Darren's Darren, typing. Yeah, I was, I was in Darren's bad books got back into his good books, <laughs> and then bad in his bad books, his bad books again. But yeah, if it was me, uh, very close, uh, very close between James McCarthy and, and Andy Moran. But I think Andy Moran to me deserves the nod. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Like I think he scored three twenty four in 10 games this season like and even going into the final you know people kind of thought that Fitzsimons might have the match with Moran still scored three points in the first half mm. and I think it looked like he was signaling to the sideline um, in the second half he had a bit of a hamstring injury or something so that's probably why why he was taken off but I think yeah I, I definitely I think Moran I think James Carty had a, a brilliant final but I think overall Moran probably deserves it yeah and there's that's, if he does get it that's the second year in a row the Dublin have won yeah. the All-Ireland and, and, and Mayo and, and maybe there'll be, there'll be dubs out there saying oh it's just a sympathy thing and, and uh, look at they don't want their sympathy yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely but you know as I say I just think um, you know for an individual like the Dublin the Dublin dynamic is that you know we've lots of stars but none, yeah. none brighter than anyone else and I think for that I think Andy Moore has had a phenomenal year yeah, so I suppose looking at all stars and lads very quickly, um, if we were to look at lads from say outside the two finalists, uh, you reckon McCarthy would probably just about keep Colin Boyle at now at this stage. Ganey maybe will get in. Yeah, I think Ganey will get in. Yeah, I think um, Colm Cavanagh from Tyrone is probably the one shout at midfield that might make it. Um, Colm Cavanagh, even sorry, yeah. Yeah, um, 
Yeah, I think other than that, like it's probably Tyrion McCann had a great season, but not not a great semi final, and that would mm -hmm. probably work against them. Um, then obviously, as we said, it's kind of heavily weighted on on the finalists. So, like you know, if you look at the you know half back line there, midfield, it, it kind of all depends where where you know Keno Sullivan is he at full back or centre back, and mm. that'll have a knock on effect. You know. Yeah, and look, there's so like we've seen Kieran Kilkenny line out in midfield. There's Aidan mm. O'Shea's lined out everywhere, barring early in goals at this yeah. stage, and you know, and that's the way the game has gone. That that middle eight now is is you know one position is not maybe the same as the next. You know. Mm. The days of putting the big lad in the middle of the field and driving the ball out there the days are gone, like, you know, so um I certainly think think um Colin Kavna has had a really good year. Enda Smith in fairness to him, you know, mm. um I thought was was decent all year. Um probably a shout for Kevin Feely as well. He did a fantastic glance mm. final, you know, give an exhibition of the mark and what you know, high feeling. Yeah. Um but probably probably Paul Ganey um, you know, would be one and, and Colin Kavna would probably be the, the second one. But other than that, you're looking at you're looking at uh, Dublin Mayo to, to dominate. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what what Dublin forwards come into it now. Like I think Conor Callan's probably a shoe, and um, Kieran Kilkenny, I feel probably probably make it. Um, and then the last one, you know, will they give it to Dean Rock, who you know, in fairness, his final performance was brilliant, um, four points from play as well. Um, and then in, in terms of Mayo, like Andy Moore, and, um, you know, it'd be interesting, like. Aidan O'Shea should probably get in and then maybe Kevin McLaughlin, you know, there's, there's still a few there that that aren't like aren't definites yet. Yeah, and that's that's the thing and, and regardless, same as every other year with the All Stars, there'll be plenty of plenty of controversy. How would we pick this lad over that <laughs> lad? And you know, everyone has an opinion and, and uh, I certainly think it's probably needs something to look at from an overall picture, you know, um where you know, you, you get scores for, for different things throughout the year and mm. some way of looking at it like that because you know, and and we've only added to it. It gets it gets predictable, really. Yeah. You know? yeah. And you'll often see like that guys are kind of put in pos into positions that maybe they weren't playing just to fit in another just another player. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and you'll get a lad that you know is making it, hasn't played in the forward all year, but has been an outstanding midfielder, ending up getting a half forward or something like that. You yeah. know. Um. But I suppose that's that's the debate every year. Yeah, well, listen, boys, it's been an absolute pleasure, a, a great final, a great year. Johnny, thanks again for joining us. Very welcome. Hopefully, uh, Darren and the lads have forgiven you there. Sure, there's always next year, Johnny. <laughs> and, uh, there's always next year, absolutely. We can say that to me as well, <laughs> Kev. Thanks a million. Sure, Scott. As per, uh, well, listen, we uh, usually kind of end on closing credits, but I think given he is a prospective player of the year and uh, he is a, in a celebratory mood, we might uh, leave the lad last word for this year to James McCarthy. Thanks a million to all of you for watching and for commenting throughout this season. We'll be back again uh, on Friday with close calls looking ahead to the ladies final between those same counties, Dublin and Mayo. But until then, uh, we'll leave you with James McCarthy. Cheers. Yeah, no, it was a special course, special, yeah, special. Day. As much as we didn't want to say, we were going to have to treat all the course you were, you know, so then, and, and, and it's, it's great to do it, you know. Yeah, we're freaking, uh, as you can imagine, it's been heavy going, but um, I know it's been, so we're a very tight group and we enjoy our company. We we, um, we train hard together, we drink hard together, we have fun together, we um, we do everything together. So yeah, no, it's been good, good, good for this. So last one, was there any doubt in your mind when Dino standing over that free? No, no, no I, I know, I know he's very cool when it comes when it comes to the crunch, you know. So the minute I was right behind, the minute he struck, he knew he knew it was going over. So it was it was, it was great, yeah.